Hallo, ich heiße Megan Ennis und ich möchte gerne über Hydrothermal Vents reden. Hydrothermal Vents lie at the bottom of the ocean in extreme environments where the sun never reaches. They spew out extremely hot black fluid that is chock full of nutrients and chemicals, including minerals, ores, and sulfides. The fluids exit a chimney-like structure and begin to rise up for several meters before spreading out and dissipating into the surrounding water. While hydrothermal vents are somewhat bizarre and a relatively new discovery, these sites are located at mid-ocean ridges around the globe. The sites sustain an ecosystem that revolves around chemosynthesis, which is a microbial process that derives energy from dissolved chemicals. Unlike photosynthesis, which uses energy from sunlight, chemosynthesis uses chemical energy to generate organic carbon from inorganic carbon. Hydrothermal vent sites are teeming with life and are really quite spectacular. They house the most unusual organisms that thrive in a symbiotic relationship with bacteria and other organisms. To understand these spectacular sites, I've chosen to focus on the factors controlling the mineralogy of hydrothermal vents. I want to prove that the mineralogy of seafloor hydrothermal vents is directly dependent upon the vent's specific location, the diversity of elements that are present, and the types of flora and fauna that thrive in these environments. To begin, hydrothermal vents are strictly located at or on seafloor spreading centers around the globe. The total number of vent sites is still unknown, but experts estimate that there are around 280 active sites. 145 of these sites have been confirmed through visceral observation and close to 130 sites have been inferred solely from water column observations. Hydrothermal vent systems are located along divergent plate boundaries in every ocean, but the main sites are located in the Pacific Ocean with sites including the East Pacific Rise, the Juan de Fuca Ridge, Gorda Ridge, and Explorer Ridges, or in the Atlantic Ocean including the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. While a few sites are located in the Mediterranean and Indian Oceans, they have not been studied as intensely as the sites in the Pacific and the Atlantic Oceans. Hydrothermal vent ecosystems are sustained by the chemistry of hydrothermal fluids. The vents are located in areas of extreme temperature and pressure, and this specific combination provides the perfect equation for life at the sea floor. Hydrothermic circulation is the main connection for transferring heat from the Earth's interior to the ocean. Circulation occurs as seawater percolates downward into the oceanic crust, where it is heated and then undergoes chemical modification through the reaction with the host rock. The fluid continues traveling downward until reaching a maximum temperature that may exceed 400 degrees Celsius. Because these fluids are superheated, they become extremely buoyant and rise quickly toward the seafloor where they spew out into the surrounding water. The hydrothermal fluids are acidic solutions that are laden with minerals that were stripped from the rocks deep within the ocean crust. Some chemicals include dissolved iron, copper, zinc, silica, barium, manganese, and sulfur. A mixture of sulfide minerals is also quite common and often includes pyrite, pyrotite, sphalerite, chalcopyrite, and galena. Among other things, the vent water is heavily enriched with hydrogen sulfide. A sample bottle of vent water opened in a laboratory can clear a room in seconds as the ripe, stingy odor of rotten eggs escapes. The creatures that live and thrive at hydrothermal vent sites are some of the most interesting oceanic creatures. While the fauna may vary slightly in different locations, and more specifically oceans, most hydrothermal vent sites have a distinguished set of inhabitants. In the Pacific Ocean, tube worms, clams, and mussels mainly dominate the vent sites, unlike the Atlantic Ocean, which is known for its unusual species of shrimp. While each community is unique and often separated widely by location, most sites display an array of fauna, including crabs, shrimp, tube worms, clams, and microorganisms such as bacteria. A very interesting observation about the fauna at the hydrothermal vent sites is that the animal assemblage is endemic, or restricted to a certain area of the habit. Over 90% of the species found at hydrothermal vents are found nowhere else. While this is extremely interesting, the most exciting news is that the number of species is growing as new sites are discovered and old sites are resampled and observed. While I still have a lot of work left to do for this project, I'm really looking forward to it because I find hydrothermal vent systems extremely fascinating. 
Naja, und schließlich danke für Ihre Zeit. Tschüss.